Hello, my name is Mr. Ganevsky. And if you're clicking on this video, that means your child is in my video game design and programming class. So I thought I'd make a quick little video so you can see what we're doing in the class, um, just in case you have any questions and in case there's any confusion. Um, we use a program called Unity and your students are actually building a video game. So let's take a look at a little presentation. Okay, so we not only build uh, video games and program them, we're also going to be building some games for virtual and augmented reality, which are two of the hottest fields in the world right now. Um, this is my contact information, uh, both from the school and personal. I own the website computergraphics.com and I have my own YouTube channel up there. So all of my lessons include a video so the students can watch those um, whenever they want. They have any questions and go at their own speed. Um, my class is part of the Arts and Media CTE, Career Technical Education um, program. And I actually have a, a section game design and integration as part of that. So career technical education means they give students a chance um, to get a career skill in middle and high school if they find there's something they want to do and they can start early. So in my class, the students have to build a game, they have to program it. And if they don't program it correctly, um, it's not gonna work. So it gives them a chance to sort of work on those uh, problem solving skills. If it's not working, why is it not working and try to solve it before they ask me. Um, by the way, your students, most of them are going from their Google Chromebook using a remote uh, software package called Splashtop into our lab supercomputers and then using the supercomputer just as if some of the top end studios uh, are doing. They're doing the exact same thing. So um, this is probably how a lot of the work is going to be done in the future. It's much more cost efficient to have the uh, computers in a central location and have people just access them through uh, like Google Chromebooks or something. So if there's something wrong, they can fix them. Uh, we use Unity, um, Unity 3D here, but it's actually just called Unity. It's using all the top games and it is free. So if you have a computer that's fast with enough memory on it, the students can download it. This is an example of their website. Um, I created a Viking game with uh, Unity about four or five years ago and I went away on a conference and I came back because we used to do like 12 projects a year. When I came back, I saw this. This, this. So I quickly realized I needed to slow down and let the students have a chance to really fool around with those games, change them and make it their game. So they have complete creative freedom to put whatever objects they want. And if they want to write their own scripts, they can too. So we encourage them to, uh, to try new things and experiment. Um, this is the old lab. When I first started my program eight or nine years ago, we were using uh, Autodesk Maya, which you can see right there, which is a 3D animation, 3D modeling program, pretty extensive. And we were using like old laptops that had one gig of memory. In fact, Autodesk actually came to my lab and wanted to see, because they couldn't believe we were running their software on these. But now we have a super lab, super computers, and you can see all of the computers, um, most of them face the middle. And there's a row right behind these computers here. So most students, if they turn, can see everybody's computer, which means if they see something they like or they need help, they can go communicate with other students. Um, we actually use both sides of the brain. So when you're building a video game and designing it and putting different uh, colors and textures in, using the right uh, side of the brain, the uh, creative side, but then when you're programming, and using logic and uh, stuff, then you're using left side of the brain. So we sort of develop both. And by the way, video games have been proven to stimulate and increase brain function. They're actually good for the brain um, because you're thinking and calculating and trying to solve things. Uh, we are gonna, we use a uh, software called C Sharp. We use the Visual Studio within Unity and it is based on C Sharp programming. So the students need to write their code. They need to understand variables, uh, 
methods, functions, um, if then statements, everything. So it's very robust and it's great for them to learn how to start to program, whether they stay in this field or not, learning computer programming and how the computer works is a great thing. This is a sample of one of my lessons. So every one of my lessons, so you know, has a video goes with it. And I also make a Google doc. So if your student's struggling, they can go to that uh, lesson and go to Google Classroom and click on the uh, Google Doc and read it and also watch the video. And if you're helping them, you can too. Um, and I'm pretty specific with what I'm doing. So th this is uh, the script that we wrote and this is my indicating what they're doing uh, and what some of these uh, lines mean. Uh, I'm not just doing this for the fun of it. Um, Unity uh, is one of the most prevalent uh, software packages used in the private industry in the world. There's nothing close to it. That's the reason I switched from 3D animation, 3D modeling to video game design and programming and virtual reality. The market was just so much bigger and growing. Uh, it's just absolutely huge. There's, it's the number one growing market in the world and you can see some of these companies. Now, a lot of the jobs that are out there, the students are not building or the people doing are not building video games. Uh, a company is approaching them about using the Unity game engine to build a specific application for like training for their companies. So they're building a video game, if you will, but it's only for that company. Um, and this is virtual reality. So you can see the statistics. Um, it's growing, it's just huge. And so it's 60% of what's being built is using the Unity game engine, the same one your students using. So that's why we're using it. Last year, they had over a million jobs for programmers uh, that they couldn't fill because there weren't enough people with the skill set to do it. And virtual reality in and of itself is growing 1,400% in last year in 2020. If you're a programmer and you have Unity skills and you're using Unity, your average salary is $20,000 a year or more. This is just the growth in um, uh, virtual reality. So this is virtual reality. It's going to grow 13 billion from 2018 to 2022. Augmented reality using the cell phone, but still can be built in the Unity engine, uh, grew eight, uh, 8 billion in this four year period. And then the headsets. Now we have a virtual reality room with two Oculus Rifts and two HTC Vives. And we just purchased the new Oculus uh, Quest 2, which is untethered. The other ones are tethered to the computers. So we will be building virtual reality uh, games. And you can see that's going to grow 8 billion in that four year period. Um, that is the Oculus Quest 2, which we don't have yet, but we should have the next week or two. Obviously, we're not using them with the virus, but we will be building the video games and I'll be testing them. I'll have a headset at my house. And when we get back to school, of course, they'll be testing them there. This is like one of the jobs that's posted. There's all sorts of jobs. You look up Unity programming, Unity designer, et cetera, you will see hundreds of jobs posted for people with those skills. And this is Disney as an example. Your student will be publishing their game and playing them. Yeah, they'll be publishing and playing them. We'll play them in the class. They'll also be able to send them to their friends. And we'll be using a um, website called itch.io where they can actually publish and try to sell their game if they wish to. Um, we haven't done this yet, but I want to do it in the future. One of the most important skills for any uh, student to have as they go through the world is soft skills, the ability to communicate, collaborate, and present. Um, so I'd love to have them. We have a little, like a little conference and adults and maybe some industry people come and they present their game as if they were trying to sell it. So that is the presentation there. Let me show you a little bit about um, the screen. So this is Unity um, here. This is the uh, interface. And in this particular lesson, we're actually experimenting with what's called visual scripting. So you saw the code I'd written before, um, which was hand coded. Well, now they have a new package where everything is um, linked with nodes. And it's really a great way to teach because it then runs and they can see the nodes moving. And if I hit like the space bar, they can see it. So I need to be back on the other screen though. Let me double click. So if I hit the space bar, they can see the code actually activating 
and it'll sort of demonstrate what happens when you're running a game and you push the space bar here. You can see it right there. As I push the space bar, this node then gets activated. So we are actually gonna be hand coding this and then we're gonna be building the same game uh, using visual scripting, um, which is something new that they've just come out with. So this industry changes dramatically and um, the software changes every year. The features, it's just exponential growth. So this type of industry um, is gonna require constant learning, um, constant uh, uh, practice and and it's going to be exciting and always going to be changing. So and it's going to be extremely uh, lucrative too. This is hand coding. So this is the, using the Unity uh, Visual Studio interface. And this is defining variables and then printing them and calling them, et cetera. If they make one mistake here, their game's not going to run. It's going to direct them to the line and it's going to tell them they have to change something. So it's sort of like learning to program by building video games, which is extremely motivating because their game's not going to play if it's not programmed correctly. Anyway, that's a brief little synopsis of my program. Uh, if you have any questions, please email me. I'm always on my email. And if your student gets a little frustrated, that's fine. Uh, this is the same class virtually that some uh, high schools and colleges are doing. Um, and your student's actually ahead of some, <clears throat> some of those beginning classes. So it is not easy, but if they practice it and just take their time, they're going to solve it. And I would fully expect maybe half my students to maybe be working in this field when they come out. And there's so many job opportunities in it. All right. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please get in touch with me.